Just... Now, if, if you can actually hear me, um, let me know via the chat box. Should be able to find that somewhere on the screen and um, give me a yes. Look at that. Like clockwork. Thank you very much. We'll start in a moment. Just let us know where you're joining us from as well, uh, what time it is there for you. We'll see who's up nice and late. joining us from 3 a.m. in Bulgaria. Hats off. <laughs> All right, we're going to get started. So hopefully you'll be able to see these screens, these slides. And um, firstly, I really want to welcome you to the 2018 Connected P online conference. If this is the first time you've ever joined the online conference, um, thank you again. If you don't know, I organize the entire event and do a couple of the sessions myself. And uh, it's always great to be able to, to share what I like to share, and that is technology and phys ed. And um, this particular webinar has never been presented before. Had the idea this time sort of last year to, to talk about it and um, uh, it sort of come together quite well, so I'm really excited to share it. Now, if you've this is the first time you're joining, you will get access to a replay. They process, they take a while, and then they get sent to you. And uh, in the replay email, you can also generate your certificate of attendance or your certificate of completion. And um, in that, you can obviously watch them back as if you were there for the you know for real for the from the beginning. Um, thanks again to everyone tuning in. I can see some incredible global reach that we have already, um, which is which is great. So I'm going to dive into this. Firstly, um, the idea of celebrating phys ed is is something that I personally fundamentally believe in wholeheartedly, and I'm going to get into what I mean by that soon. Um, but first, a bit of background. I run the website, thepegeek.com. Uh, let me know if you've ever been to thepegeek.com website, if you've ever visited before or uh, ever ever looked at one of our podcasts or our webinars in the past, um, let us know. Thanks to those people that have. Uh, we started that many years ago when there was like one person who used to read it in 2008 and that was my mum. At least she, she said that she used to read it. I'm not quite sure if she actually did, but uh, eventually we got to a point where, you know, lots of people did read it and we ended up traveling the planet, um, running training for teachers We've been to you know thirty or forty countries, running these events for teachers, um, and it's you know it's great. We get to see what people do with tech. We get to actually help them implement it, and I've bundled as much of that up into the stuff that we do on that site. However, you know the biggest thing that sort of forms the reason why I value technology is my own practice, the work that I did at Bort District School, and this webinar you're looking at how I used to do this stuff at Bort District School uh, in my own practice. So celebrating phys ed with technology is the title of this session. And I've sort of alluded to it a few times now, but you know, what do I mean by celebrate? And essentially the sort of, the sort of thing I mean is that you're using technology or you're 
celebrating what's happening in your phys ed practice and showcasing it to a bigger to a bigger audience and and that could be another teacher it could be your wider school community it could be parents it could be uh, even beyond you know it could be another country or or global for that matter and there's a whole host of opportunities here with technology to capture what's happening in your in your classroom and get students excited about that and and share that and it can start very simply and it can get to you know be far more advanced but you know what i want to ask you and put this in a chat in the chat box is what ways do you celebrate your programs and what i mean by that is do you do a newsletter do you take photos and share those do you have a parents night you know what are some of the ways that you try and capture the excitement that happens in your pe program and and spread it beyond um, just be very curious to see what sort of things people are doing at the moment i know that you know uh, i can see a few things in newsletters and, and twitter and facebook Thanks for that, Ross. Obviously, social media plays a huge role. You know, you've got this ability to to share what's happening very easily with with your program. Elizabeth has said Twitter as well. Um, you know, these are these are these are great opportunities, and it it takes what used to be very isolated in in your program and, and just make it a little bit more known. School newsletter and Facebook, yes, absolutely. The school newsletter is that classic vehicle that can be leveraged. Digital newsletter through small, great stuff. So. Um, there's obviously some things that we do, but I want to share some some other stuff as well. And before we get there, if you're not sharing some of the things that are happening in your school program, um, maybe maybe there's some opportunity here, and I want to explain why. So the first reason why you might consider it is that obviously it, there's an advocacy point. You know, you're going to advocate for what's happening in your program. And you can do that through some of these different mediums and, and share that out and, and hopefully turn that into positive thoughts and, and feelings about your program. So there is the advocacy front that if we are sharing and celebrating our classrooms, our PE classrooms, then it might make it easier down the track when we're trying to uh, change mindsets. This is obviously pretty powerful too. You know, I'm obviously scanning through some of these comments here and and Natalie, I would absolutely imagine that if you're in, inviting and using your parents uh, and sharing to them, they're going to get this huge buy-in from the stuff that's happening in your program. If you're sending a newsletter home and parents are reading it, they get an awareness of the stuff that's happening in your program. And I think that's tremendously powerful and, we, and, and sometimes we underestimate that. It can be very simple to engage a parent through some of these communication mediums, but it can have a huge consequence for um, down the track obviously the community buy-in is also there you know if if you're publishing something that goes beyond the walls of your school this can lead to community engagement i think this is huge here you know you can change perceptions through some of these mediums you know if you're communicating to people who previously maybe didn't have great experiences with phys ed you know this could be the catalyst that changes their perceptions around why you're doing phys ed you know maybe they really didn't enjoy it but when they start seeing photos and pictures of the stuff that their kids are doing or that you know other people are doing uh, it can change their perceptions and, and that's positive positive. and you know i think this one's quite powerful and maybe un under leverage but we could have parity with other subjects you know if you think about Art students, they probably typically have an art presentation and dance students, you know, performance arts. There might be a school concert. You know, we can leverage some of these benefits and, and bring those into a PE practice and, and get the same level of parity and attention and gravitas associated with the PE classroom. And I, I firmly believe this, that if you are advocating and sharing the stuff that's happening in your practice that, or in your classrooms, and it's in a wider scope that if you're going to have a better and richer program like for the students there's a real world audience whether that's just their parents or whether that's just the school or whether that's bigger than that but um you know i i think there's some huge opportunity and so at this point you might think well how can technology help in this particular scenario obviously i've asked a few questions already around how you share 
and celebrate the stuff that's happening in your practice. And, and some of the stuff was mentioned, use technology and, and other stuff didn't, but you know, how can tech play? So the first thing is it can make it visible. You know, without technology, some of the stuff that we do in phys ed is, is a little bit invisible. You know, like if you're, if you're recording a student's skills, for example, you capture it on video, you can clearly see it, you can showcase that and you can share it. Without a video, without photos, it's hard to sort of quantify what that looks like. So technology makes stuff visible. And when it's visible, it can become shareable. Obviously, it makes it authentic. You know, if you can capture it and showcase it, then you can show someone what's actually happening in your practice or in your classroom and people get a real feel for that. It becomes more authentic. So when you're trying to, you know, get your school behind the things you want to do in your classroom, you can use some of this celebration stuff and make things a little bit more real for them if they can see it and actually look at it. Um, as opposed to you know some of the other subjects, they're really authentic because they're very visible. PE sometimes is is less visible. We can make this sort of stuff global as well. Like you know, there's tremendous examples of people who are doing stuff in their programs that have far-reaching impacts across the globe purely because they've made it uh, so and, and sort of shared it in ways that are shareable beyond the walls of their classrooms. We can make it permanent. Technology makes things a little bit more permanent. If you record something and share it to an online space, you know, it, it's going to be there forever, potentially. And, you know, that's great. It, it makes it a little bit more of something that we can sort of look back at in the future. And I think technology is full of possibilities as well. You know, back in the day, if you wanted to communicate to parents around what was happening in your practice or in your classroom, you probably would have just had it a piece of text that you could use and you would send that out to them. But now with the possibilities that we're going to share, you could be filming videos of the class every class and communicating that to parents. You could be, you know, live streaming it. There's a whole host of opportunities that technology brings um, to the table. I was to see a couple of questions in there about certificates. They process with the replays. So the replays take a few hours because of the video. Um, compiling and then eventually you get a replay and in that replay email is your certificate link. So what type of tech could we use for this scenario? And uh, well, to be honest, you could use a variety of tech and you could use tablets, whether they're iPad or Android, or you could use laptops. Whatever you've got access to, you'll be able to find ways to celebrate what's happening in your practice uh, on a grand scale. Now, for the purpose of this presentation, if you see the particular icons on screen, so if you see the Apple icon, if you see the Android icon, or if you see a Chrome icon, just assume that that thing that we're talking about or looking about, looking at, is available on those devices. If it's the Chrome um, icon, then it's available on Chromebooks or just standard laptops, desktops, etc. Um, so just keep that in mind. If, you, if you're wondering what sort of devices it's suitable for, uh, use those. Obviously, people have a variety of different devices and um, I want it sort of inclusive of all of those. So here we go. The first different type of way that you might celebrate the stuff that's happening in your PE practice is in the use of photo and video. And it's probably, it might seem obvious to some people to take photos of their program, but to others, maybe it's a, it's a whole new thing. But once we've taken those photos, there is some opportunity there to sort of take them to a new level. So the, the simplest thing that you can obviously do is just use the standard camera app and take photos of the things that are happening in your program and, and create a, a bulletin board of the things that do happen. And, and maybe that's only celebrating the, what's happening in your program with the students who are in there. But I can tell you that from experience, when we took photos of uh, a unit of work and, and we made this known to students and we put it up on a bulletin board in our school, it created some celebration and excitement around that unit that wouldn't have existed to the level that it did without the photos on their own. Now you could take those photos and you could take them to a whole new level by sort of you know whipping them together into a comic 
And this is an incredible app called Comic Life. And it's basically the simplest way that you can piece together a comic showing something in, and sort of make it a little bit more interesting. And it's available on um, you know, desktop and, as well as uh, mobile devices. And if you can imagine taking photos of, say, your gymnastics unit and then piecing together a little gymnastics sort of montage of photos and little uh, exciting pieces there, you could then, like, send that home and as a bit of a snapshot of what's been happening in the PE program to this date. And, and you know, there's, there's some incredible examples of, of what teachers have, have done with this, and I'll show you some of those in a moment. But, you know, just from the glance there, it, what could you... What ways could you use Comic Life to celebrate what's happening in your program? Now, think about the comic book format where you've got multiple pictures and you can put text on there. Um, what ideas spring to mind right now about how you could use comics to celebrate what's happening in your PE practice? And I'll just give you a few moments to, um, to, to put down your ideas, but like the end of the unit sort of celebration, you could take pictures of that. You could take pictures of the process of you know, something or announcing my super sharks for the week. Oh my, that's an incredible I idea, Aaron. So I'm guessing they're like the, the students of the week sort of style thing. And you could use a comic to explain who they are and send that home and, or put that up on a wall. Super simple idea. But you're now taking what's happening in the in the PE program that maybe wouldn't have been heard of before, and it's now being visible, and you're now celebrating it. You're now creating some attention and awareness around it. So that's awesome. Um, I think there's a couple of examples. If you just, if, I mean, if you just type into to Google Comic Life Phys Ed, you're going to find a heap of people who are leveraging Comic Life for different ways. But um, it's just an incredible format because literally you snap pictures into tiles and you've got a comic book. Um, really easy to use. Now, the next example I have, or the next type of app that you could use, it's available on all devices, whether that's Android or Chrome or um, or your iPhone, iPad, etc. is just to simply make a collage. Now, obviously, these are very sim similar to the, the comic book example, um, but maybe not quite as, as comic styled. But yeah, why can't you take pictures of the things that are happening in your program with a few words and place them around and, and, and distribute these as almost like a, a monthly newsletter to your school? Maybe they get sent home with parents. Maybe they get attached to a newsletter. Maybe they don't leave your school. They just get put up on a bulletin board and um, sort of start to create a little bit of an awareness around um, the things that are happening. Now, a question there, suggestions on ways to curate photos. A very simple way that you can do that is just to have a shared Google Drive account or any of those other, um, you know, sort of cloud tools where people can take photos, put them all in one place. And then later on, you can use that to compile some of these collages. But, I mean, this sort of seems like a super simple idea, like take some photos, put some text on it. But the value of this is, is not that. It's what happens when you share that with people who, um, you know, you're trying to build some engagement with. And I can tell you what, these things, these things have cut through when, um, when you make them part of your program. Now, okay, what about if you've been taking some photos and you want to do something a little bit more exciting with them? So I, I, as I scanned through earlier, I saw some people were doing this. They were taking photos. Fantastic. Maybe you want to take it to the next level. And you could use an app like Animoto. And Animoto is, you can see on the page there, animoto.com. You can go and put in your photos. It automatically matches some music and transitions to those photos. And then you end up with a video slideshow that has music and some animations. And just a very simple way to share what's been happening in your program. So you could very easily, in your next class, your whatever unit, volleyball unit, you could take a series of pictures of the kids doing whatever they're doing, use Animoto, and then you could generate a um, cool little work, a cool little video that showed that with a bit of style and flair. Now, there's nothing stopping you from going and editing that yourself. You could edit it yourself, make some transitions, but if you just wanted to take photos and then have the app do it for you, then you could just use Animoto. 
And then from there, you could do whatever you like. You could post that to you know, social media or a website, you know, whatever it is. Now, funnily enough, Alison has, um, has, has, has mentioned the next one that I'm going to share with you. But uh, you can see here that, you know, simple process, anyone can create amazing videos or sort of slideshow videos using Animoto. But even better is this app Magisto or Magisto. I'm not quite sure how to say it, but essentially it's the same idea. You're taking photos and videos of things that are happening in your program, your PE class, and it automatically, I should say the word automagically, I'm not sure if that's even a word, but it is today, automagically creates incredible movies based on the things that you've taken. So I recently went on a trip um, overseas and I was taking photos of the different locations that we're in and some videos and so on. And at the end of the day or what seemed to be the end of every day, we would get a video that was like the compilation of those photos and, and movies from the day. And they were incredibly sort of edited and pieced together showing all the different things um, that we've been doing. So Magisto, highly recommend it. You could easily take photos and videos of the things that are happening in your class, turn it into one of these videos and then share that, whether that's in your school circle or beyond your school circle. Now, the common question I usually get at this stage is, well, I don't really have time to have take photos and videos. Well, keep it simple. Just have the students maybe be involved in that process with a role that rotates every couple of minutes. So there's like a photo uh, film crew role and they rotate through that role. They spend two minutes on that role taking photos and videos. And um, or maybe you could leverage some of the injured or unable to participate students to be the film crew and quite literally give them the role that is very clearly defined with a task um, and maybe a task sheet and uh, then you don't have to think about that. So um, the, the other opportunity that you could use here with photos and videos as well is to do a collaborative word cloud. These are one of my favorites. So what you do is you have your students collaborate on words that reflect their PE experiences. So what I'd like you to do right now is just in the chat box, put down a one word description of something that makes you think about phys ed. So uh, just a one word. And if you can think of more than one word, go for it, just so that I get a heap of words here to, to use. But what's a word that sort of, yeah, great, Tanya, we've got movement there. What's a word that sort of sums up the physical education experience for you? We've got lifelong learning, endurance, uh, obviously things like activity, exercise, fitness, active, fun physical literacy, fantastic, that's brilliant, I love it, balance, fun, obviously, you know, all these words coming through. So imagine getting your students to do something like that. Now you could have them collect these words on a piece of paper if you wanted to keep it super basic, or you could use something like um, a Google form and the kids could fill out that Google form and you get all their different words and then you turn them into a word cloud. Now, word clouds have, uh, there's, a, there's a million different ways you can, you can create these. So I've just suggested that you search word cloud, not world cloud, word cloud in Google, and you'll find a variety of different tools. And what you could then do is take all those different words that you just got from your students, put them into the word cloud generator, and you get given a word cloud that you know might look something like this, and you print it out nice and large, and it becomes the words that your students have about that particular lesson or session or unit or whatever it may be. And then you could take that word cloud and you could print it or take it or send it home or start to actually leverage um, the different feelings and things that people have about students. So um, word clouds are super easy, super, super collaborative too. Like if I'd gone through and put the, all the words that you've just given me into that word cloud, um, and that would look that would look pretty cool. So there's some photo and video opportunities. They're certainly not the complete opportunity. You know, there's, there's way more photo and video things that you could do that aren't mentioned. But I, I really want to stick to just the things that I know that I've seen success with and, um, and sort of, you know, just keep it there. And, and feel free to share the stuff that you've done in each of these categories as well. So communication. 
Uh, yeah, Natalie, that that word cloud there was one that I found that looked cool. That you'd have to find a word cloud generation engine that allows you to put photos in there as well. Most don't; they're just images. You can sort of orientate them around. Okay, so communication. So, what ways can we celebrate what's happening in phys ed and by increased communication to who, to the people in our audiences? And what I'm going to start by doing is is asking you what or how do you share what's happening in your PE classroom now? I sort of asked this already before, but um, you know, a few people mentioned like newsletters. What other ways are people communicating with what's going on? And like spoken word, maybe you've got parent teacher nights. I don't know. What what other opportunities do people do? I'll just give you a few moments to Twitter and Google Sites. Great. Email, great. Still, it's still a communication medium. You know, it's it's classic Vestal. Face Facebook is that like a Facebook group, um, Kristen, or a Facebook page? Highlight video reels in Canvas. Facebook. Yep, we are rotating staff meetings, sharing for classes. Great, awesome, Adam. Community talking with parents. Yeah, absolutely. All these things are valuable. Like a school Facebook. Great. Anything that shares what's going on beyond is, is fantastic. And that can just be text or it can be like we've spoken about, photo or video. So traditionally and still very relevant is a traditional sort of PE newsletter where, you know, every term or every whatever period of time you choose, you compile a newsletter and you send it out, whether that's via email, whether that's via um, traditional means of printing it out and sort of attaching it. Perfect. If you're not doing it, there's a very simple path and you could have your students potentially be the ones compiling the PE newsletter. Maybe they rotate that role. So every every week or whatever, they there's one student or a group of students who are tasked with compiling the PE newsletter of what happened that week. There it is. Send it out. However, you could take this to a new level with, and I saw this mentioned before, using a website like S'more. Now, if you have your own PE S'more, put it in the, sh in the chat box so that other people can see an example. But a, a S'more is, is essentially like an online newsletter. And really, their there's subtitle here is you can make them in minutes. And that's completely true. You really can. You don't need much time at all. And you, know, you can put in pictures and, and uh, even videos and text and so on and sort of get get a real engaging looking design. You can even print these out as well. But here's a couple that I found online. So um, hats off to Salem Central School in, in uh, New York and this elementary school that I found. I, I literally just did a Google search for physical education and small and found these two. And you can see what they've been doing. They've, you know, this group here has just done a hula huts teamwork activity. They've taken some photos, they've explained about it and they may have made this publicly accessible for parents or the wider community to see. Same thing here, the elementary physical education classroom, their December report basically, and they're showing what's going on in their practice um, and a great way to communicate. And like I said, technology makes things visible. You could have just done this with text, but it probably wouldn't be quite as clear as to what was going on. So. The use of photos, the use of videos can really paint a picture of what's going on. Now, okay, the next thing that you might want to do in the communications scope is utilize push notifications and SMS. So what this means is you probably get push notifications or SMS yourself, but you may not realize that you can leverage those for communication mediums. Is anyone using or heard of remind.com? You can go and sign up there and you can get an account. You can use it to actually send communication to parents, sort of, yeah, Ross has, um, through these different mediums. So that when something happens, it pushes out an alert to all parents who have and are signed in and connected to that school or that class or whatever, however it's been set up. And um, obviously they're being constantly engaged. So that's one opportunity. But I think the, the most amazing thing to have appeared in schools in recent years, bar none, is Seesaw. And 
Seesaw is is just the best. And the reason is because A, it's free to a certain point. You can use it for free to, to capture photos and videos and share those. Uh, if you want to roll over years, then it, you know there is a paid element to it. But I know many people who use the free part, never pay for it, and they get a ton of engagement. Let us know if you are using Seesaw and if so, how. But the basic premise is that you utilize Seesaw on any device and you can take photos, you can take videos, you can leave notes, you can show links. And these go into the Seesaw classes that you set up. And you can also give parents access to see just their kids' material. So imagine that you know John, whoever that may be, his mum is able to watch, look at John's portfolio as it grows. So every time you take a photo and it's got the word John, attached to it or you attach John as the, the subject in that photo or video. John's mother gets a, a, a message and they can go in and look at that stuff. And obviously you're building up this tremendous transparency between what's happening in your class and how they're able to see it at home in, in basically real time. So if you took a video and uploaded it to the seesaw with you know, the particular kids who were, that was relevant, the parents would see that straight away, potentially, and you know you'd be able to you'd be able to have this tremendous dialogue. Um, Allison's message that you know she's uses it for updates, reminders about events, portfolio work. The parents can comment. That's exactly right, and they can give feedback based on things they're seeing, highlights of the class. You know, this is like a window into your classroom. It's like being there virtually. Um, th there is no better example, I don't think, than the leveraging of Seesaw for communication in these days. The other way that I, I like it is um, Justin Slider did a presentation for last year's online conference, and he uses it as a way to communicate with parents about things that have happened with that kid. So let's say you had a student who had a difficult day and you typically would ring them up and talk to them and try and you know, have a conversation around how you can help that student. He uses Seesaw for that approach. So he can send a video direct to that parent where he's maybe talking or explaining about what the situation was and create a, an asynchronous conversation about how they can solve that situation together. So very clever use of Seesaw um, and lots of people using it. So I highly recommend checking it out. Like I said, it's free. Now, another way that I, I've seen a few people using to communicate is social media. And there's plenty of opportunities these days to create a Facebook group that's closed and restricted to just your school community. Twitter um, updates for, you know, different things happening. And the number of physical education PE departments that fo follow me on Twitter is huge. I, I see it regularly. So there's lots of people who create a school specific physical education twitter account and then they use that in a safe way obviously making sure they follow their school's guidelines to ensure that they're keeping people updated um, it's a yeah incredible way to to leverage some of these mediums that people are already on because if you use things that are not already what parents are using you'll necessarily not necessarily see as many of engagements in that as you possibly might with some of these opportunities. Facebook's huge. Obviously, um, if you can leverage it, your school allows you to do so, um, you're going to get a lot of engagement and a lot of visibility into your programs. This is the next one. And, you know, there is, op there, I am seeing schools do it. We did it at our school recently, and that is live streaming events that are happening at your school. So imagine if you know, imagine if, for example, you know, you've got a, a school presentation on or a, or a field day, a sports day, and parents can't be there because their work or typically, you know, they just would miss out. But with some of these opportunities, you could live stream the event and they could watch that as if they were actually there and you're starting to celebrate on a bigger scale the things that are happening. And this might seem outside of the box and completely impossible to achieve, but you know, with any of those apps now, you can literally press one button and you're live online streaming what's happening to your wider audience. 
Now, there's things that you would need to consider and make sure that you're, you know, you're doing to ensure that you're um, keeping that restricted if you want to keep it restricted or making it open to the world. But the opportunity there is is massive. You know, you you can be one click away from live streaming what's happening in your PE program to a bigger audience than than um, than that you think. So the greatest example I saw of this was um, a swimming carnival that was live streamed to Facebook to a, a, a Facebook group that only the, the school controlled who was in it. And um, the parents were able to live stream and be on it as if they were there, but they weren't there. Amazing, incredible, incredible stuff. Um, and yeah, Natalie, we are doing Jump Rope for Heart soon. Something to think about. You could, you could live stream your Jump Rope for Heart and use that as a way to garner maybe even further donations. Um, awesome. So question for all of you, which of these communication methods could you try next? Um, if you need a quick summary, we went through using the traditional PE newsletter, using SMORE, using something like Remind or Seesaw, or leveraging social media and live streaming. Let me know which one sort of appeals to you right now and how you maybe could potentially use that. So I'm seeing a lot of the SMORE, a lot of Seesaw in there. I, Absolutely. Um, it's, it's the best. Yeah, Wendy, streaming. We can all now one-click stream to the world, which is scary and also super, super powerful at, at the same time. Um, we, don't have, we don't have to have people miss out, really. We could stream events to them um, you know, with, with the tools we have right now. And, yeah, I mean, obviously check with your school. Make sure that you can do that sort of stuff. Um, definitely. Remind for our special Olympic events. It's a shame, Ross, that your school won't, your district won't let you use Seesaw because, you know, there's a tremendous amount of value there. Hopefully they change that in the future. And, um, yeah, small. I, if, you, if you do create a small, share it with me because I'd love to, to see what you've done. Okay, so obviously there's a few things here, but you can now transition into something a little bit more permanent as well. And maybe you set up a PE-specific website. So firstly, I'm going to ask the question, do you have a class website? Now, I'm not saying you have to have one, but if you do have one, let me know. Like, do you, have you, yeah, Karen does. I think she uses Google Sites. Is that right, Karen? Cool. Just the district one. Okay, with Canvas. So there's, I mean, there's lots of these tools that you can use or might be re required to use. Um, but for some people, this idea is completely foreign. You know, they've never considered it. But it, in, in many ways, the class website is a culmination of all the stuff that we've been talking about. You could take photos, you could take text, you could take some streaming stuff, and you could sort of bring it all together into, into a website. And, you know, probably the most common way that I see this happening now is through the use of something like Google Sites. And I know Johan's just mentioned that because they're a G Suite, a G Suite school, they can leverage Google Sites. You might be able to leverage Google Sites and not be aware of it, or you can just go and create a free account on Google and start to leverage it um, yourself. But it's drag and drop simple. You literally drag and you're building a website in a matter of minutes. And that website can be public or it can be private, completely up to you. Another opportunity that I haven't seen anyone mention yet is... Um, Weebly. Weebly is another way that you can drag and drop build websites. Quite a few people have Weebly websites for their, for their classes and use it as a way to keep parents up to date on a very simple basis, changing photos and pictures and so forth. But I'm also going to put in here Seesaw as well as a, as a website opportunity because it really hits the mark on helping you communicate in, in the sort of the same way that a website would. Um, but obviously in a more closed down environment and centered around this sort of portfolio idea. So, you know, obviously you can use Google sites and create a public website that everyone can see, or you can do a private one. You can use Weebly and create a public website, or you can do a private one. And with Seesaw, it's not really public. It's mostly just about being private and helping you curate and collect and organize stuff a little bit better than websites do. Um, yeah, there's there's tons of really good Weeblies. I know Johan's just mentioned one now in the chat box. Mike Graham's Weebly. He's a PE teacher. He uses Weebly, um, you know, drag and drop simple. So 
the other opportunity that I want to share with you, and maybe you do this as well, is the idea of celebrating phys ed by taking phys ed home. Now, I don't mean taking your whole PE class and, and, and taking that home, but I mean taking some of the things that you're learning about and doing in phys ed and, and, and sort of not giving them as homework, but encouraging and incentivizing people to do stuff at home and sort of get that, get that excitement happening about your subject. And I'll ask the question, have you ever sent phys ed home? And I, I can see Natalie here saying, I give families unhomework. Explain that word, unhomework. I think I know what you're, you, you're getting at, but what, what do you mean by that? Uh, Ross, yep, he has. If you've ever sent phys ed home, what have you done? Like, has it been, I don't know, an activity or a task or has it been a, something where they have to get their parents to assist them with? Uh, there's, there's a whole wide variety of things here. Summer has nice... Yeah, I mean, it, it is, yeah, family challenges, month-long challenge with family. Like, these are great ways to celebrate what's happening in phys ed with your program. We have home workout challenges. I sent pedometers home with activity ideas. Patricia, that's awesome. So, I mean, these are this is celebration. This is great. So a couple of ways that I have done it, because it's very accessible and very easy, is the use of Cosmic Kids Yoga. Now, you may have seen Cosmic Kids Yoga. I talk about it a lot, but this is a literally plug and play website, YouTube channel, I should say, where you get guided through these incredible yoga videos that quite literally can just be pressed play on and you know you can then have them follow along. Now, this is designed for younger kids, but there is Yoga Studio designed for older, older kids. But you could easily send this home for parents to do and then join in with their kids. Here's an example of that happening as well. So you can see... Uh, in the you know back home, they've got some yoga happening. They in a classroom scenario, they're following along on the on the floor, and in you know another sort of scenario there, and uh, it's yeah incredibly engaging. But it could be a way that you could send home this send home this phys ed message and celebration um, just through the use of Cosmic Kids Yoga. The next one, and I see a few people mentioning it, is Go Noodle. Go Noodle is. Um, is another example of active sort of classroom environment activities. And they are one of the sponsors of our Connected PE conference in Dubai that they, um, they create these incredible videos that you can have whole classes doing and you can send these home as well. You know, this could be an activity that students do at home and you're starting to celebrate what's happening in the real world. Now, if you've got older kids, because Go Noodle is a bit more younger kids, um, you know, elementary, primary ages. What you could do here is maybe move to something which is more sort of like middle school, high school, those age groups, and that would be something like Fitness Blender. Now, fitnessblender.com is the website. You go there and you say how many minutes you've got access to, the type of training you'd like to do, so Pilates or um, low impact, whatever that may be, and the type of equipment you need. And then... You end up with a workout video that takes the students through um, as if it was a personal trainer. And I didn't actually put a picture in there, but there's there's hundreds of hours of, of workout level equipment that you can, um, the workouts that are almost like you've hired a personal trainer. And you could quite literally say, okay, students, for this week, I want you to go home and do one of these workouts at home. And you're starting to bring home that message and create positive feelings and associations around um, you know, some of the stuff that's happening in your classroom. But I can see a few people there have used it. Yeah, warm up and cool down. Exactly. I've even used it at home personally just for, just for my own exercise. Um, you know, I had a group of students that, that wanted to do Pilates, and I have no idea how to teach Pilates. I, no clue. Wouldn't even know where to begin. I think I've done it once personally, but... You know, I went here and said 30 minutes was the maximum time that I had. I ticked the box for Pilates and I did a search. And I ended up with some videos around um, Pilates. I hit play and then I sat down and, and followed along. And, you know, it was a great way to 
have someone who knew what they were doing take my class. And for me, it was a great way to, to sort of show my interest in that thing by joining in. So we've reached the end of this webinar. It's about 45 minutes that we've been going for so far. This is not an, a fully inclusive list of different ways that you can celebrate what's happening in phys ed. So feel free to share the things that you're doing about getting the things out into the wider world that, um, that you're doing to celebrate your message. But if you've got any questions at this point, feel free to let me know in the chat box any questions about different software or different apps or different um, websites or things to consider or anything that's sprung to mind throughout that session. I've tried to answer them as we've gone along. Um, but, you know, I guess the whole point of this is, is to take the stuff that we do in our PE practice that's usually not very visible and make it a little bit more known because sometimes we are in our own little worlds and it's hard to know and for other people to know what we're actually doing. And by using some of this technology, we can make it a little bit more known um, to a wider world. So to wrap up, I want you to answer this one question, and that is what's got you thinking so far in this webinar um, today? So just leave your little thought process around one of the different tools or strategies or, or something that's got you interested or in you know thinking about how you might be able to use it. What is that one thing? And you can probably combine this into the next question and is what's the one thing that you'll explore further when you get back to school, when you start um, you know, leveraging it? What is that one thing? What's got you thinking and what's the one thing that you'd like to explore a little further? Sandy said all the ways to get what we are doing in class. Awesome. What, what are other people thinking? Tech with parent communication. Going to try some s'mores. I think they're food too, s'mores. Um, maybe that's what they were getting at. But, yeah, what, what are you committing to right now to try out so that you um, can take away one thing? Because if you do that, I'll be quite happy. Um, Kristen says she thinks she'll make a web page. Great. Great way to do it. Uh, I plan to use Comic Life and Animoto to show my students what they look like. Awesome. Fitness Blender. Streaming activities for family to try at home. That's awesome, April. So way to do it. Building an archive. Um, maybe sending PE home and, and trying streaming. I'd love to hear how that goes as well. Jamie, using injured and sick students to take photos and then sharing those photos. Family fitness tip. Unhomework. Awesome. Streaming events. Weekly PE montage. That's a good idea, Adam. And it's super achievable. None of this stuff is like rocket science. Um, it's it's just making use of some of the vehicles we have now. Alison, starting from day one, making it my mission to keep the community updated weekly using a variety of different videos and pictures and streaming. Yeah, I love it. This is, this is, this is the end of the, uh, the webinar. So at this point, what's next? You'll get a certificate. The certificate won't say 2016 on it. It'll actually say 2018. You'll be able to generate that. Um, you know, showing the, the list of things that you've done. And that will follow with the actual webinar itself, the replay, so you can go back and uh, watch that. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And, uh, yeah, awesome stuff. I have a couple of questions that are coming through. Like, do you guys have a projector or big screen? Um, Jim, there is a session later on this week about projectors and big screens. I also do a fair bit of work around that. And I've asked this question. Um, if you go to big screen PE, you can actually see what people say and some more information around it. Uh, nice, Ross. Pull down screen but need to wheel in a projector. Awesome. Uh, it's been great sharing. Look out for the replay to come through. And uh, in that replay link, in that replay email, I should say, is the link that you use to generate your certificate. That'll be the same for all of your different sessions. You'll get a replay whether you've turned up or not, and in it is a link to generate your certificate. The only thing I ask is that you don't generate certificates for sessions you've not attended because they will be audited. And um, I don't want to catch people out who are fraudulent, fraudulently creating certificates. 
Um, you're welcome, Karen. That's the end of it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all in our next sessions, whether that's you're sticking around till I think the next one's in about six or seven hours' time, or whether you're going to catch it on replay, or whether I'll see you in another webinar later this week. Um, thank you, and I uh, look forward to speaking soon. See you all later. The slides, I'm sharing them with you now. They are the actual slides themselves. Um, can anyone confirm that they just like received a not a note or something saying, here's the slides? Because I've just pressed share slides. Awesome. Um, you can be able to download those and uh, get access to them for later. You probably can get those in the replay too. So great. There's some slides there if you want to keep track of them. Um, sorry for forgetting about that. I'll disappear now. See you all soon.